Hello and welcome to Paint Shop Pro Basics, episode 41, The Color Changer Tool. Before we start, this lovely piece of uh, photography is provided by Fallen Stock at DeviantArt.com. Um, the model's name is, well, at least I'm assuming the pseudonym is Bob. And she made this dress herself. It's actually quite awesome. Awesome. No more eloquent word than awesome. Anyway, so what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you how to use the color changer tool, um, both how to use it and how to use it effectively. When uh, the color changer tool was first introduced, Corel um, advertised it as being a one-click solution to changing uh, the colors of clothing. Well, I'm sure as most of us know, there's no real such thing as a one-click solution. You can get close, but there's still going to be some sort of editing or touching up that you have to do to make it look good. So along with just showing you what the tool does and how it works, I'm going to show you how to use it effectively. So this tutorial might take a little bit longer than it normally would have. I'm going to, I've actually got some pre-made samples for you. Here's a red dress created using the color changer tool. And here is a oh, excuse me, pale blue dress also made using the exact same method. It's very quick, very easy, and um, let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to know is where the color changer tool is. It's right down here. It's underneath your flood fill. Just come down and click it. And there are two options. Simple. The first is your tolerance setting. Tolerance, again, defines how closely related other pixels must be to the color that you chose when you clicked on the image. So if I click here, uh, any other color within a 95% tolerance of that color will be colored using our foreground color, which is over here is a uh, very dark red. Okay. Edge softness, on the other hand, refers to how the colors bleed into surrounding pixels. Um, for, this is really nice for softer edges where there's a slight bit of blur. Um, so any pixels no longer have to have uh, no longer have to match within the tolerance setting. They will start to absorb some red, and just lightly mixing it together as it bleeds out. So try to keep your edge softness low. If at all possible, try to keep your tolerance low as well. You don't want to be selecting too many colors. Now uh, the problem with calling it a one-click solution is that if any other color in, is that okay. Let me start again. The problem is that the tool, unlike the flood fill tool, uses discontiguous pixels. In other words, it doesn't care if the pixels are directly connected to the ones you picked or not. It's going to go through your entire image and change those pixel values in the whole image. So back here we have a Jungle Gym with blue poles similar to the color of her dress. If we were to click on her dress now, those poles would start changing color. And then, of course, anything within a tolerance level of that blue would also get it. The trees are somewhat of a grayish, and so they could easily have a hue and saturation similarity. And soon everything would start getting red. It would be nasty, be wrong. So in order to prevent that, what we need to do is we need to move the dress to its own layer. There are lots of ways to do that. My favorite is to just grab a freehand selection tool and just loosely go around it. It does not have to match up perfectly. In fact, it's better if it doesn't. That way we can get some of that uh, bleeding edges that I told you about. Really soft transitions between them. And there, that should be good. Go to our selection menu, select 
promote selection to layer. It makes a copy of it on its own layer. You can see that here. Go to selections equals none. And grab our color changer tool and now just click anywhere in the dress. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> My tolerance, way too high. It's a little bit better. Not much, but a little bit. Okay, we're starting to really just narrow down on the dress. Too much in the wrong direction. One more. Okay, we'll bring down our bleeding just a little bit. Not much. All right, hit OK. And we have our selection. Now, it's not perfect. There's still some cleaning up that we can do with the eraser drill. Since it's on its own layer, that's just fine. You can just come in here, select areas that are a little too red or that bled into the wrong place. And on the layer, her leg here is a little edgy. And her foot, chin, a little jagged. OK, simple. Now, of course, the dress is a little too red. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take the transparency of the layer itself down a smidgen. This allows it to blend a little bit better into the original color. So we decrease the strength. It mixes a lot better into the original colors of the image. You know, they weren't all that poppy to begin with, so we don't want an overly red dress. And then we can use our blend modes from there to get even more changes. If I go to Hue, you can see we get a lot more realistic red, and we can see that pattern a lot better. And so it looks somewhat realistic. It still pops a little bit too much, maybe. Bring it down just a little bit more. OK, that fits in very well with the image. But to get our pale blue, oddly enough, because I used red, you know, how would I get a pale blue? Go to the lighten mode. Da -da -da, it went blue. <laughs> it is that easy to change colors and using layers to really get some interesting effects to really change things up. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll be there.